OK, so uh, the next um, uh, slot is, is from me uh, and is going to be on using Power Automate as a tool to increase productivity, uh, both for teachers and indeed uh, for schools more widely. Um, so uh, I am uh, one of the ME fellows uh, for Microsoft this year. Uh, I represent the, uh, the central region, which is the uh, London and uh, East region of the UK. Uh, and um, one of the things that I've been doing a lot of in the last few years is really focusing on uh, the power platform and how that can be used uh, to really improve the way we do things in schools. So uh, a little bit about this and, and what is Power Platform. Uh, so uh, Power Automate, which is what I'm going to focus on, is a part of the Power Platform. And in this session, I'm going to talk about what Power Automate is, what it does, uh, and talk about how it can help you to simplify uh, some everyday tasks and also give you some steps uh, that you can use to create your first flow. So Power Automate, really the purpose of it is to enable organisations and individuals to be more productive by automating repetitive business processes. So pretty much anything that you can think of that is something that you have to do repetitively uh, is probably something that you can add some automation to uh, in order to save you time. Power Automate is a part of the uh, Microsoft 365 suite and works with all of the Microsoft 365 apps. So, um, you know, the, the full the full suite, Word, PowerPoint, et cetera, Forms, uh, OneNote, Teams, uh, SharePoint, all of those apps can work with Power Automate. And there's many more that are not part of Microsoft 365 that can be used as well. Uh, so it can link to Twitter, it can link to other third party um, websites and apps. Uh, if you are a school that subscribes to uh, Microsoft Office 365, um, then you'll find Power Automate uh, on the Office 365 menu. Uh, so you can see that uh, I've highlighted it there. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't show for you, then you can just go up to the search bar at the top and type, start typing in Power uh, and it will come up for you. Um, and um, you can open Power Automate that way. Now, there are three main components to uh, Power Automate and the flows that you create in it. Uh, these are actions, triggers and connectors. An action is what you want to happen uh, as a result of some kind of trigger. Um, so, you know, you want um, you know, certain steps to take place once that has been triggered. Those are your actions. So the trigger is the thing that starts the process and we'll talk about some different kinds of triggers shortly. And the connector is a way of connecting lots of different apps or different accounts into that flow. So these are the three sort of main types of uh, flow that you can use. There are some others, but these are the, the three that I think are most useful in the education sphere. Uh, the first is the idea of an automated flow. So this is a flow that um, is based upon something happening, something else happening. Um, so, um, for instance, a new response is submitted to a Microsoft form. It might be a form quiz that you've set for students to complete, uh, or it might be a form that you've asked parents to fill in, perhaps a survey. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, when they fill it in, that can be used as a trigger for Power Automate. Uh, similarly, if you use SharePoint, uh, an item that's added to a SharePoint list uh, could be used as a trigger for an automated flow. Another type of flow which is slightly less used, um, both uh, by myself and uh, by um, Polymat, uh, but also probably from an educational point of view is probably the least, of, least used of the three, uh, is the instant flow. So the idea here is that you're creating a button effectively and the actions will take place when you press the button. So it might be that you embed this into uh, a spreadsheet and perhaps you've got a row selected in Excel and when you press that button that you've created, it will do a certain set of actions based upon that row. Similar, I suppose, to how macros would work. Um, and then a similar thing in Teams. If uh, you've got a message selected in Teams, you could have a button uh, that does something as a result of that message. 
And the last one is the scheduled flow, which is for time-based uh, recurrences. So, for instance, it could be sending a, uh, a weekly reminder email or a digest of things that have happened during that week. It could be to check for items that have changed in a particular location like SharePoint uh, during that time period. So they're the three main types of flow that you can create in Power Automate. Now this is uh, from the, uh, the Microsoft training for educators that, um, uh, that we do. Uh, and uh, it's you know, a few slides showing you how you could set up your first uh, flow if you've not done so before. So essentially, um, the screen that I showed before where you, you find Power Automate in Microsoft 365, you open that and you create a new, uh, a new flow. Um, and then I've chosen here to build a scheduled flow. Um, the title I've given it, Weekly Department Meeting Reminder. And I've said that I want to start running it on uh, the 17th of November 2020 at 10 a.m. And then I want it to repeat weekly on a Tuesday. And that is the first thing that you would do. So that's you setting up your trigger for your automated flow, saying when it's going to happen and how often it's going to run. This would then uh, give you a button that says new step to add the actions that are going to take place as a result of that trigger. And in this example, uh, when I click new step, I'm choosing the mail action. And this will then allow me to send an email. So in this case, it might be that I've got two members of staff in my team and I'm sending an email to them um, to give them a weekly reminder about the department meeting that's coming up. Um, and in this case, I'm sending them a message that tells them to submit items for the department meeting. So items to go onto the agenda, perhaps for that meeting. And uh, so therefore, every week um, on a Tuesday at 10 a.m., as, as um, I showed you, uh, this email will, will go out to those two people um, uh, with that reminder. You could then add additional steps to this. So again, this is in the Microsoft training uh, package. And uh, what they suggest is uh, then using the Planner app, which is a, a great app in Teams. Uh, which you could then use to actually assign tasks to people. So I could say to, uh, to these two, Connie and Luca, um, that uh, I'm adding a task to their planner that specifically asks them to submit items for the meeting. So not only have they got an email reminder, but they've got a task in planner um, that they, they have to action. If they don't action it, it will just keep reminding them constantly. So they have to go in and tick it to say, yes, I've done that. Um, uh, that job that has been assigned to me. Uh, and this is how you would do that. So, um, you know, if you've not used Planner, um, uh, I, would, I would strongly say take a look at it. Uh, but essentially, uh, it's, it's saying that the group, the language arts department in this case, um, is going to be sent a Planner task uh, to submit agenda items for the department meeting. It's going to go into their to-do list. And uh, as I say, they need to tick it off to say they've done it. Another part of uh, Power Automate that's really useful is the concept of approvals. So uh, you could create a flow that would ask a question. Um, do you give approval for X, Y or Z? And um, the, the person would then respond that they approve or they reject. Uh, and then you can have uh, some conditionality in that flow. So if someone says yes, they do approve, uh, then, then this happens. If they say no, they don't approve, then this happens instead. So that kind of approval flow uh, is something that is really useful uh, in schools. So here are some example scenarios that uh, teachers might use um, for Power Automate just for themselves in the first instance. So for instance, you could set up a, a, a flow um, that checks when a student hands in a document to a folder that you've created in SharePoint or in Teams. Let's say it's called uh, homework submission or uh, final project submission or whatever it is, a folder that you've got that you want students to put work into. Uh, and whenever uh, a student puts a document into that folder, uh, it will notify you, it will tell you that, that they've done so. Um, and I mean, you could even get it to attach the file to that email when it's notifying you. Um, 
when a student submits a response in form, so a quiz, as we discussed earlier, um, you could get it to, uh, to send you an email or you could get do some other actions based upon that. Uh, you could add it to Excel. For instance, you could create a mark book and then every time you've got a new quiz, it will add the, uh, the, the result uh, as another column to that mark book. You could get it to automatically send messages, emails to students or parents to remind them to submit a form. So just like the one we've just seen, uh, a sort of automated flow reminding them to submit something on a weekly basis or however often you wish to do that. You could get it to notify you when a student posts a message to a specific channel in Teams. So uh, you might have a channel uh, such as like a subject help channel um, where students have encouraged to post questions for you as the teacher. Um, and whenever a student does post something in that channel, then it could alert you uh, to the fact they've done so. And again, you could do more things with Planner or, or Microsoft To Do uh, in terms of adding to a to-do list. Uh, I use this one, uh, for instance, when I uh, send an email to uh, IT support. Um, and um, if, I, if I don't do this, I, I forget that I've done it. Uh, I forget that I've asked them to do something. So I get it to add it deliberately to, to my to-do list. And that way I've got a list of all the things that I've asked uh, for them to do. Uh, and I can go back and, and, and look at that and remind myself of things that I've asked for um, uh, in the future. There is a, a large number of templates that have been created by Microsoft for education, and there's a link um, just here uh, to that. Um, but you can actually find them when you go into Power Automate and go to the templates section. You can actually go into the education uh, area and find these. Um, and um, there's some, you know, some of the templates examples are there. So translating of communications into different languages automatically uh, using the Microsoft Translator software. Um, again, scheduling announcements, adding forms, responses to SharePoint instead of to a spreadsheet. Uh, you could use it for sort of CPD requests. Uh, and I quite like the, the example that's the teacher onboarding. So a school could come up with a list of tasks that a teacher must do when they first join the school. Um, and uh, put all of those into their into their to do list and uh, they they go through and, and, and do them. So at Polymat we use Power Automate a lot um, in combination with SharePoint, with Forms, uh, with Power Apps. Um, these are some of the things that we do. So we've got, for instance, a calendar digest that goes out. This is one of the scheduled uh, tasks. Uh, so what that does is it looks at our SharePoint calendar. It finds all the events that are coming up in the next seven days and it sticks all of that into an email and sends it out to staff every Friday. So they've got a list of all the events that are coming up in the next week. We also have a message digest which goes out um, uh, daily and goes through all the different uh, messages that have been posted to the staff announcements page um, so that they don't miss any of those messages and just reminds them to, to be keeping up to date with um, all the communications that the schools are sending. Uh, we've got various um, flows that have actions when a form is completed or when a quiz uh, is completed. Um, and you know a, a number of those are used for things. Uh, for instance, if we wanted uh, to get information uh, about a student and uh, their well-being, we might set up a form for that. We send that form out, they complete it. And once the form has been completed, it might put all those results into a spreadsheet and do some analysis on it for us, um, which would enable us to take, take more action uh, with that child. Uh, similar kind of thing with, with list items in, in SharePoint, and we use that for, again, lots of different things. Um, uh, adding a reminder when emails are sent to specific addresses. I just mentioned my one to IT support there and various things to do with approval flows, such as uh, absence requests. So if a teacher wants to request an absence, uh, we've got a flow that deals with that. Now, I'm not going to play this video uh, now, um, but this video is uh, available on YouTube. Uh, you can find this on our YouTube channel, and it really um, illustrates some of the things that we do at Polymat around SharePoint, around Power Automate, and around PolyApps. 
Um, and uh, so if you if you want to know more about what we do, then I would suggest going to uh, to that presentation that is on the, uh, the Polymat YouTube channel. In terms of what you could do next, if you're interested in doing more with Power Automate, um, the first thing is obviously to look for those common everyday tasks that you could automate and that would help you to focus your attention on where it's most needed, which is, which is learning and teaching. Uh, there are various courses and uh, resources around that you could use. For instance, the uh, Power Automate to Increase Productivity course, which is on the Microsoft Learn website. Um, you can book training or a fuller demo uh, with myself. So as a me fellow, I've got a booking calendar, which you can go to. Uh, you can click on there, uh, book in some time with me, and uh, we can go through and, and support you. Uh, in uh, how to use uh, the Power Platform. And obviously, if you are doing that, please do tweet uh, about your learning using the hashtag Microsoft Edu. And um, it'd be great if you could also uh, tag in Polymat Schools uh, as well. And uh, the final thing is whenever we do these uh, Microsoft training sessions, you can um, redeem uh, an achievement code um, uh, for this, which will help you to achieve uh, a Microsoft Educator badge. Um, the code is just there on the screen uh, and you can copy and paste that into the education.microsoft.com website um, and it shows you how to do that on the screen there. OK, so that's a, a very brief uh, introduction to Power Automate and how that works. Uh, I hope that's been useful. Uh, we're going to move on to the next presentation.